Hey, hey, welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander. And today I'm going to say something opposite of most what most people say. That's probably, if you've listened very long, you probably know that's, that's often some of the times that I take a, a different approach to uh, a specific topic, a specific idea, and what is contrary to either popular belief or just, you know, the, the society and life that we live in. So, um, yeah, we're going to talk about going slow. We're going to talk about slow growth. We're going to talk about forward progress rather than go, 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 grow, 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 hit a million by, you know, next week. Because if you really slow down and you look at your Instagram ads, you look at Facebook ads, you look at ads on Google and on YouTube, what are they all screaming at you? Hurry, make a million, make, make it fast, do it in three months, do it in next week, right? whatever it is, usually it's making money, right? Anytime anyone's rushing you into anything, it's either has to do with like weight loss or money. And I just want to point out that your pace doesn't have to be anyone else's pace. You know why? They're not living your life. Other people's progress is different than yours. And it always will be. That doesn't mean that you can't aspire to something else. That doesn't mean that you can't move at a pace that you're comfortable with. But let me just ask you something. I want you to really contemplate this and really think about it. How often do you feel like you're not going fast enough? You're not good enough. You're not moving fast enough. You're not doing enough. You haven't gotten enough off your list. The other question I have is, if you ever feel that way, if you ever feel like, gosh, I just, I'm always behind, <laughs> y'all, I feel always behind. So I'm talking to me. I always say that to you guys, right? I talk to me just as much as I talk to you, okay? One of the things that I really have been looking at lately is pace. Why do I feel so rushed? Why do I feel so behind? Am I comparing myself to someone else? Am I comparing my business to somebody else? My success to theirs? My circumstances to theirs? Because comparison is the thief of joy. I don't remember the original quote that that comes from. I feel like it might have been Eleanor Roosevelt. It could go back farther than that. I could be misquoting altogether. But comparison is the thief of joy. So when you're stopping and asking, you're rushed, you feel pushed around, you feel like you're not doing enough, you're not working hard enough, you're not making enough progress, you feel like you constantly have setbacks. Tell me, what's your measuring stick? What's your measuring stick? Are you measuring your success, your failure, your pace, whether or not you're on target on something that's realistic for you and your life, your investment, the time that you have to put in, the money that you have to put in, the energy that you have to put in, the knowledge that you came to the table with? Y'all, this all matters. It all matters. If you are lining yourself up next to somebody who's been doing business for 20 years and they had thousands and thousands of dollars to invest and 20 plus hours a week to dedicate to their business, you're dang right they're moving faster than you. There's no shame in that. There's no problem. There's no anything. That's just fact. And guess what? At the end of the day, that doesn't matter. <laughs> because their pace is not your pace. And even if they started with the same exact, which is very, very rare, by the way. No one has the same exact circumstances, the same family, the same money, the same time, the same energy, the same knowledge that they're bringing to the table. All of those things factor in to everyone's success. But what's really important is to look at how far you've come. And if you're feeling rushed and burned out and pulling your hair out every day and wondering how, when, how and when you're ever going to get done, it's really time to slow down 
and look at what you really need and what you really want. And are you on the right path to get there? What is it that you're focused on? Focused on, obsessed with, constantly thinking about. Because you are the only measuring stick for your own success. Comparing yourself to others and their progress and their business and their blessings and their things are not going to help you at all. Your circumstances in life is, are different. And that's okay. And your pace can be different as well. I want you to really caution yourself next time you hear words like don't miss out and hurry up and take action now. Yeah, those are great, great things. And it forces us into decision making, which is also great. We definitely need to be making decisions in life and, make, and, and not always overthinking and sitting on the fence. But in business, generally speaking, people think more is better, bigger is better, faster is better. But I'm here to tell you, it's not the case. My biggest piece of advice for people in business is start where you are and use what you've got. You know that some people start this business and they put all in and they put so much money and time and effort into it only to get three months down the road and realize they absolutely hate it. Start small. Take small steps towards something you want. But deciding what you want is the first step. Deciding what you want. So you're in business. Most people that are listening to this podcast are running some sort of business or thinking about it or have and are starting something new. Great. It's really, really important on the hard days that you remember why. Why are you here? Why are you doing what you're doing? What is it that you want in life? And there's no shame in what you want. I always say no shame because people shame themselves all the time and they don't even realize it. They excuse or dismiss their dreams, their ideas, their thoughts. Like, oh, I just want this little old thing. Don't ever put shame on yourself. You want what you want. That's fine. You don't even have to have a great reason. You can just have a mediocre reason. But on the, on the days where it gets really hard, your mediocre reason might not be enough to get you through, to push you through the hard times. But look at your pace. When's the last time you made a big mistake? When I say big, I mean either it hurt a lot of people or hurt yourself or cost you a lot of money or just made you look like a complete idiot. Like, I don't know. I, I feel like I do these things all the time. But when you take a look at what caused the mistake, majority of the time, it's that you were rushing through it. You didn't think through the options, the outcomes, the risk, and the reward and make a solid choice moving forward. You rush through because you just want to get something done and then you missed a step and had to go all the way back. It's usually because of a rush. Most car accidents happen because someone's in a hurry and they're not paying attention to what they're doing and they're in a hurry. Are you in a hurry? Where are you going in a hurry? What are you going to do when you get there in a hurry? What do you want at the end? See, I think people get co so caught up in day to day and checking things off the list that they forget the big picture. Where are you going? What do you want with all of this that you're doing? And is it worth being in a hurry? I have taken some time to slow down a bit this summer and it's been fantastic because it gives me the opportunity to look at what I really want, what I'm really working for and working towards. And when you're in a hurry, you're just going through the motions. You're just checking stuff off the list. You got to get to this, got to get to that, got to get to this, got to get this done, got to get that done, got to get the shipment in, got to get this phone call, got to answer this email, got to answer this, you know, IP claim, whatever is going on in your business and in your life. And you forget sometimes where you're going, just going through the motions and hurrying up. And in the meantime, you pick up your phone to scroll and you see, oh, grow faster, go bigger, go do this, go do this. And you just feel so overwhelmed. Because everyone's screaming at you in every direction to hurry up, go faster, move along. 
But what would actually happen if we just went slower? What would actually happen in your life if you took the top four things that you absolutely must do today and nothing else and do those four things? The most valuable things. What would happen if you doubled your research time on your next product or bundle? You just decided you're going to take double the amount of time to just be thorough. Not overthink. Now, there's a whole other thing when it comes to overthinking. And yes, when you're at us, if you're going at a slower pace, that you're, the temptation to overthink is definitely there. You're giving yourself more time. But also, when you're, when you're thinking about overthinking, remember, you can't deposit excuses. So if you're making excuses and procrastinating and overthinking and not actually making a decision and doing something, a mistake is not the biggest thing that you'll ever do. You're going to make mistakes all the time. Let's just be real. We're going to make mistakes all the time. We're not perfect. We're going to screw up. We're not going to cross every T and dot every I every single time. I mess up shipments even still. I mess up things in my business even still. And you just, it sucks. Yeah. But you keep moving and you learn from it and you look and examine, why did I make this mistake? Oh, because I was in a super big hurry and I forgot this and this and this and I was overscheduled and I was, mm hmm nine out of 10 times mistakes come because you're in a hurry because you're just trying to steamroll ahead and you're missing things. And when we're not paying attention and we grow too fast and too big and too strong in the beginning. Lots and lots of things slip through the cracks. So as your coach, as your mentor, as a person walking in similar shoes on a regular basis, selling on Amazon is frustrating um, and awesome all at the same time. Creating is a process. It's not something you tr cre create, excuse me, it's not something you just check off your list. Creation, creating a bundle, creating things that go together in a creative way that solve a problem and need a, meet a need for your customers takes time, y'all. Time. Do you know that Nike has an entire product development team like on a whole entire floor of their headquarters and that's all they do all the time? It takes several years for some people to develop new products. Now, we have a head start because we're doing wholesale bundles, right? So wholesale, the products are already created and we're just crafting and putting them together. But creativity takes time. It takes a special energy. If you're rushing, you're gonna get the result that you put the work in for. If you're rushing through, you're gonna get a half-assed rushing through product. Is that what you want? Because the comparison thieves, the people over there telling you, you're not good enough, you're not fast enough, you're not big enough, you're never gonna make it, all those different things. And they tell you that inadvertently, right? Like they show you their mansion and then they say, well, where are you living? You know, it's kind of passive aggressive. You know, if you want this, then don't do this. Like actually, it probably, even if they actually have that for real, it took them years and years to develop that, to get there. Instagram is an instant, I promise. I promise. The things that people are telling you, the successes that they've had, the successes that they found, it took a long time to get there. So it's okay for you to take a long time to get there too. Are you moving in the direction that you want to go? Where do you want to go? What do you want? And are you running? Because when you run, guess what? You miss stuff. When you're in a hurry, you miss things. When we're going at a slower pace, we might miss a billboard. We might not see something when we're running. But if we're going slower, we can read a billboard and we go, oh, that's something interesting. If you're taking a walk, you see a lot more than if you're running. Because when you're running, you have to stay focused. And there's so many other things that you need to be doing. And you're not seeing the things that are going by. There's a time to run and there's a time to walk. There's a time to crawl. So I want you to think about this. In these kind of lazy days of summer with longer days and hotter weather and some of us are hunkering down inside in the AC if you're living like south, the south of US. <laughs> and some of us are happily outside because this is the only time we get nice weather for the year. But no matter what you're doing, think about your pace. 
And think about what would really actually happen if you just slowed down. How much time are you spending on things you really don't care about? Now, I'm not saying the things that you don't want to do. Like, clearly, I don't like cleaning and cleaning the toilets. I have to, you know, things like that we have to do. Um, and I like to make a best of that with either music or a funny podcast that I'm listening to or a book on uh, uh, aud Audible so that I don't have to do boring, mundane jobs without being entertained. <laughs> so I like to do that as well. Um, but think about that. Use that dedicated time of doing menial chores or, you know, things like that that we're all responsible for to entertain yourself or educate yourself. I love podcasts and different things. And sometimes I just, you guys, I literally have the funniest podcast idea. So if y'all want me to start this other podcast and just, just like give me a shout out or hit me up my DMs and be like, yes, please do that. Just to entertain myself. I love music and I thought it would be really funny to just read song lyrics like poetry in like the most sarcastic and passive aggressive terms you know it just would be funny like rap songs like let me let me let me read snoop dogg lyrics only i can read them in a very quiet and contemplative tone <laughs> wouldn't that be funny <laughs> anyway that's like my dream maybe there's a podcast out there already if so send me send me one there's one podcast i know that's so funny that the lady um read all she does is like read amazon reviews but they're hilarious like she finds the funniest reviews on products on the internet and then she reads them and that's just the podcast and people it's hilarious so you know entertain yourself um is part and, and just thinking about the slowing down so part of of looking at your own pace is number one stop looking at everyone else's pace and always remember when you're on social media you're seeing everyone's best of the best most of the time how many times have you taken a selfie and been like oh i'm not posting this my eyes half closed or like 14 hairs are out of place or like some weird strangers in the background you know what i mean like so people don't always post that stuff they post the ones that have filters and are edited and are special and have music and like the rest of us do, right? So behind that is the same to-do list, the same pace, the same business, the same tasks that need to be done. So number one, stop comparing yourself to someone else, their pace, their starting block was different than yours. Their circumstances were different. Their money was different. Their education, their everything is all different. None of us are the same. So you have to look at your own pace and say, what are you comfortable with? What do you want from your business, from your life? What is your ultimate goal? Now, you guys, if you don't, excuse me, if you don't have Dream Big, Step Small, go get it. You can listen to it on Audible. You can download it uh, on Kindle or you can buy a hardcover book or a soft cover from Amazon or from the website, mommyincome.com. Go to products or courses and there is a book bundle there that you can buy. Read the book, read chapter three, read chapter four. Okay, just read the whole thing. I promise you there'll be something in there that you can take with you. And there's practical steps at the end of each one. Dream big, step small, really small. So small that it doesn't look like you're moving to some people, but you, know that you're moving and that's all that matters one of the things i heard way back in the day when i was trying to get healthy like i always am you know being healthier or trying to be healthier is no matter how slow you're going you're still lapping everybody that's on the couch and honestly that's funny but it's also really true most people are just living their nine to five, complaining about their life, just waiting for it to be over. But not you. You decided to start a business to move forward, whether you work a nine to five or you're going to replace it, or this is your side hustle, or this is just something fun that you want to do because you heard it was cool. Whatever it is, no matter what your pace, you're still lapping all the people who don't have the guts to do it. You need to celebrate your mo mo movements, even. Celebrate your movements. Celebrate your progress. Progress is checking off your list. Progress is getting that first bundle in, and that second one, and that third one. 
progress is letting go of things that aren't selling so that you can move forward towards things that are. Progress is deciding that maybe this isn't for you anymore and it's time to move on. That might be the scariest decision you make, but you know what? It's okay. It's your pace. It's your business. So just wrapping up here, I just want to encourage you. Move at your pace. When you see something that compares yourself, that causes you to be tempted to compare yourself to someone else's business, someone else's progress, someone else's something, say, wait a minute. I'm lapping everyone that's on the couch. I'm ahead of everybody who hasn't even had a business. And that's perfectly okay. Because you know what? Time's going to go by anyways, right? Time's going to go by anyway. And a year from today, you could have a business that's making you extra money, or you could still be making excuses. You could go really, really slow and maybe make $10,000 in a year. Maybe we'll just call it 12000 You think you could make 1000 bucks a month on Amazon? It doesn't take a ton of effort to make $1,000 on Amazon. It takes effort. It takes time. You need to learn. You need to do some things. But this time next year, you could have made $12,000 more dollars going at a slow pace. But most people are like, no, make 10000 next month. Well, that feels like a lot of pressure and a lot of rush and a lot of move, move, move. Now, now, now. But how about you look a little bit more long term? And you say, hey, one year from now, I would like to make a thousand extra bucks a month consistently. That is so, so reasonable. So just think about those things. What is your pace? And why is your pace the way it is? Are you rushing because you need to get to some sort of fictional finish line that's not even yours? That you didn't define for yourself? I'm going to give you a little secret. There's no finish line. <laughs> Spoiler alert. In entrepreneurship, there's no finish line. You can't help it. You keep moving. You keep innovating. You keep creating. You keep moving forward. You keep serving. You keep helping. You keep creating products that serve people. It's just there. There's no finish line. The finish line needs to be your own self-improvement, your own celebrating of the successes. Because the journey doesn't end. It twists and turns and takes different places and different, different avenues. But it doesn't end. There's no arrival. You don't get to a place and go, oh, this is the destination. I think I'll hang out here. It's always moving. And I, I know that that can seem overwhelming. But it's really true. As entrepreneurs, we pivot, we change, we innovate, we create. And eventually we retire, I think. I think. I don't know very many entrepreneurs that are retired. I feel like you can't help it at some point. You're still always just like doing business. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not at that stage of life yet. But honestly, look at your pace. Slow down. What's the worst that can happen if you do? What's the worst that can happen? Sales slow down a bit? Maybe they won't. Maybe you'll be so focused on taking small intentional steps that your sales will increase because you're being more intentional. You're not doing all the things and throwing all of the stuff in the mixing pot and mixing it up and hoping something works and then trying to figure out what worked. No, you're being specific and intentional, slow one track minded not in this world of insta everything where you want to have you want to sneeze and then have an instant bless you right of course we that's like normal right but everybody wants that they want to be like okay i opened my amazon account i should have a million dollars now <laughs> realistic expectations help us stay on pace and not comparing ourselves to other people or their progress or their anything again a reminder that everyone brings something different to the table. So comparing your business to someone else's 
or your progress or your success or your money or your timeline is crazy business. So this is your full permission to just go as slow as you want to. But by all means, go. This is not an excuse to just do nothing. This is your permission to move at a pace that's comfortable for you. And even when you're outside of your comfort zone is when we don't want to move, that we're still moving even slow. What is the smallest decision that you can make to move in the right direction? What's the easiest decision to make next? Do that thing. Move forward in that direction. You guys, you've got this. I know that everyone wants us to move along so fast and at everyone else's own pace and it's okay to not do. It's okay to not do. This is your full permission to go as slow as you need to. But by all means, keep moving. Take small steps. Y'all, I know you could be anywhere else doing any other thing. I don't take that for granted. Thank you for listening to the Amazon Files podcast. Please make sure that you subscribe. And if you were inspired or motivated or pumped up or challenged, share the episode. Share it with someone and say, hey, I think you need to hear this. I would be honored for you to share the podcast with somebody. And until then, see you same time, same place next week on the Amazon Files.